Good afternoon. Welcome back to Charlie and Friends. Well, it's been an exciting weekend this way, this, this week, and today, double exciting. We got two guests here today. We got uh, uh, Susanna and Cornbread's back with his little guitar, which is going to be great. And <clears throat> it's been a busy day. Usually when I'm coming up here, I kick back a little bit and rest and, and think about what I'm going to say or what I'm going to, story I'm going to come up with from back from the old days up to the new days. But today has been one of those days where you just go, 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 go. <clears throat> Good afternoon. Just Welcome back down. to Charlie and Friends. And even coming up well, here. It's been an exciting today, weekend this way. Just, just this week and today, head. double exciting. I remember what time I, my show was. I didn't know if I'd be up here at 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock. Then I got an interview with Channel 24 between 3 and 4. We had meetings today all with the DA I did, the Sheriff Department, a judge. I mean, things have been going wacky. And we're getting our reports out with the grand jury, because most of you guys know I've been on the grand jury for two years now as a, a, a foreman. And But today we tried to relax a little bit of today and did a chili cook-off. And that was fun. I mean, we had seven of us guys making chili that don't know how to cook. And that could have got pretty dangerous. Because <laughs> I know on mine, I, I, I had no, I didn't get to taste mine last night when I made it, or nothing. I just grabbed it this morning, shot out with it, took it to the grand jury, plugged it in, and let it go. <laughs> then we had these judges from the fire department, three chiefs, came in, and they did all the judging. And when it came right down to it, I knew I didn't play, because I know one girl, she's a regular Betty Crocker, and this one guy, that's what he does for his fun on weekends. He goes to chili cook-offs. So you know them two people, they had experience, and the rest of us didn't. Anyway, we turned ours in and snapped his wall over. I won second place, and I just could not wow. believe it. I mean, I even dropped my big <laughs> bag that I won. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not much, but... I opened my envelope in it, and it had $30 in it, so it paid for my food in it, because <laughs> it cost me $45 to make it. I didn't believe that. First time I've gone shopping in a long time uh, to get food. In fact, on that, you know, that makes me think of something. I'm going to bring Suzanne in right now, because I know she's been shopping and stuff like that, being a lady. You know, household, grandkids, and all this stuff. they got to go out and shop. So. <laughs> yeah. Suzanne? Yes. What are you up to? I just bought a home. I just went through the Fannie Mae process uh, through Mike Briggs uh, Realty and Renee did his chance, Sanchez, sorry, uh, was a lifesaver. And uh, yes, I just got through grocery shopping also. Things are scary. Up, huh? <laughs> you, wow. It's, I, it's scary. Yeah, my wife used to tell me that, tells me that all the time. I just got to ignore her. I don't think not much of it because I don't go in and mm -hmm. buy food. She does all that. So if I had went in there and I went and got me some just one pound of hamburger, then had these little square cubes of meat made up. I, you know what? That like it'd be pretty good in chili. <laughs> so I picked that out. Mm -hmm. And each one of those, the hamburger was like six dollars. Yes. And this other little meat was eight dollars. I go, wow, this ain't much here either. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I get to, went to the other stuff, I. Bought one little chili pepper. They charged me a dollar for it. I go, man, I used to grill these by the ton out here in my backyard. Uh huh. Because I lived out where I got acreage and everything, and I got built these big old planters up high, you know. But well, I don't have to bend over. Yeah. <laughs> got lazy. <laughs> well, you know what? Buying a house, that's what I get to do next is build the planters, put the plants in there, grow my vegetables so they're fresh. And I don't have to buy them at the store. Yeah, that's what I used to do all the time. And this year, I just didn't have time to do it. But let me tell you, when you do it, make sure your planters, you get mm -hmm. them up high enough. Yeah. Because <laughs> let me tell you, at our age, we're not youngsters no more. No. I, I keep finding that out. I mean, I try to get on, get down to your knees and get back up. And it's like, oh, man. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of grunting and pushing and yeah. getting back up. <laughs> Kind of embarrassing. Yeah, yeah. Then you grab something over here. Oh, nobody looking here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you grab it and then you climb uh -huh. up. But you know, it's they just ain't fun getting old. 
But when I built mine, I built mine up high like that. And everybody laughed at me. What are you doing that for? That's because I don't want to bend down. <laughs> and but when I would go clean them, I just da 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 da. You know, they're, it's so easy when they're raised. Yes. And then all these people that were laughing at me, now they wouldn't raise theirs up. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. They always laugh at me, the crazy things I do. But sometimes the crazy things I do, they like what I did and they end up doing it too. So <laughs> I don't That's know why they laugh at me all the time. You know, they <laughs> laugh at themselves, you know, <laughs> for not paying attention, you know. Really? You know, give me a bad time beginning, but everybody gives me a bad time for some reason. So how did it work with Mike and guys buying a house? It was quite a, quite a process. Um, I almost backed out four or five times. Uh, you know, being at, at the later part of your life, and you have to be really careful with funds. Yeah. And it's a scary process, but there is something wonderful about having your own place, and you can do whatever you want with yep. it. Paint a wall, build a flower bed, grow your vegetables, up here, preferably. Oh. You know? I'm glad I did it. Oh, you know, you'll really enjoy it. I've had a house all my life. Back to my first house, when I got married, I was like 20 years old, 21. <laughs> I just came home from work. My wife said, we own a house. Oh. I go, what? <laughs> she goes, oh, yeah, yeah, we bought a house in Vice City, California today. Thanks. <laughs> what does it look like? Where's it at? <laughs> I mean, I don't know how she pulled that off, but she did. She pulled it off and we had to go sign papers. Oh, that's signing your life away. Yes, it is. And it's a scary process. Yeah. You know. Sit maybe. there and sign and sign and sign and you know, everything's all this fine print. And you don't have time to sit there and read this. Unless you got a month or two. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you take the word for it what they say. And that's what's scary to me because later on down there would be a closet and they can just come and take your house if they want to. You know, I would tell you that if it weren't for Renee and for Robin, I couldn't have gotten through the process. There were so many things that I didn't know, and they were so great about helping me. And that, that just tells you that you have to find somebody that's really good for you to help you through that and somebody yep. you can depend on and trust, right. trust their judgment. Yeah, without, and, and Renee, he just seems so... <laughs> gentle with things but he yes. does it you know he's got that easy go manner and yes, like he, he, he kind of cracks me up because me and him both laid brick oh that's really? what we have in common yeah, we, both. we have some brick at my house uh, you want to help no no more <laughs> <laughs> I, last brick i laid i was 60 years old and i ain't gonna pick up another and i haven't i mean i laid many of them but then i you tell me you 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 ride i do ride horses i have ridden since i was well, old enough to get on a Shetland pony and be bucked off. Yeah. <laughs> and I've ridden most of my life. I don't ride too much anymore, but it's just a, a pleasure to, you know, go up in the hills or oh, yeah. along oh. a, a ditch bank and yeah. particularly in the evening time, you know. Yeah, really that's fun. how I grew up too, just like that. I mean, we had a ditch bank behind mm -hmm. us. That was our swimming pool. Yeah. Um, you know, that we swam in. And uh, water swift, ice cold. Yes, it is. But you know what? You became a good swimmer. <laughs> <laughs> that or you drowned one of the two. <laughs> a girlfriend and I went swimming one time, and we were in one of the canals out near in, in the country where I lived, and we were jumping off the back end of our horses. And uh, her horse took off, and she fell off. And for some reason, I just reached down and grabbed and grabbed her by her hair, and the horse had kicked her in the head. <laughs> You know, oh. and so, but, you know, we went back and did it again. Teenagers, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You come back from those rebounds yeah. sometimes. So I know yeah. I was telling stories here a couple of weeks ago about my horses and my ex-wife. Mm -hmm. What I'm how, way back in the old days, you know how you got girls wear falls? Sure. Well, she was riding with me, and my horse got away from her. And he went through these walnut trees. Oh. And I didn't know she had a fall on. My mom didn't know. <laughs> and, and the limb caught her in the back of her hair. <laughs> and here she would go, and here's the hair's back here. <laughs> My mom came outside. I, I swear, I thought she had gone to have a heart attack. <laughs> All I could hear her yell, scream, oh, she's been scalped, she's been scalped. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then to top it all off, the horse came up to the fence and stopped. Mm -hmm. Went over the fence, and she fell in this big old pile of 
horseman who oh, had buried herself in it. Oh, that was. I was going to say, she didn't hang around much longer. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. She couldn't be, no, she just could not get into that set of mind, riding horses and everything. And like I said, I've done that all my life and yeah. love it. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I rodeoed, I, I team roped a lot. Did I you mean, ever ride at the Clovis Rodeo? Yeah, oh yeah. I probably saw you I've, out there. I've done them all. Yeah. I mean, quite a bit of them. Then, then a lot of entertainment up there. I don't know if you mm -hmm. remember when they had the Clovis Parade. Yes. We had this one club I was in called Goshen Mountain Place. Mm -hmm. They had that old, old stage age coach from back in the old days, and we'd shoot our guns off and blast, make all kind of noise. And they always put us right up in front mm -hmm. with our horses and everything. So our horses we rode had to be pretty good and tamed and everything. But the older I got, my wife thinks I got rid of them all, but I just couldn't do it. I still got me too. Do you? Yeah. I still yeah. ride? Yeah, 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 yeah. Good. But uh, it's harder. <laughs> I mean, it's getting it, up or down, that's harder. Getting up. <laughs> <laughs> getting down, no problem. <laughs> I can fall off. I'm good at that. <laughs> but getting up there, I never realized it. I mean, it just seemed like overnight, I, mean, I used to just boom, boom, on you go, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the last time I went out riding, me and some of my buddies got ready to go out there, and I went to stick my foot in the stirrup and throw my leg over. Oh. <laughs> I couldn't get it over. And I go, man, what's going on here? Yeah, yeah but you know, I had a knee operation since then. You know, I had a fake knee and all that good stuff, but I got me a, a rock. <laughs> they climbed on it. I got looking around at them guys, too, and that's what they did. And they were a lot lighter than I was, too. <laughs> you know, but they, they that's how they got on. So that's what I do now. I just oh. get me a rock. Yes. Or I'll call my horse up to the fifth and stay there <laughs> and try to jump on him. <laughs> Well, being five foot two, I always had to have something oh, to climb up on. Yeah, a tall horse, no. or even a small horse would be tall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I know that feeling with, because I've owned a big horse when I had 18 hands. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's big. Yeah, yeah, I get time I got on him, I got a nosebleed when I got on him. <laughs> <laughs> it is horrible. <laughs> I think the last time I had a horse, he was 16 and a half, and and a good size. hands yeah he was a good size he i rode with the california range rets which was a all girls drill team drill team I yeah got him. and I remember um, him. it it was quite a chore but gosh i had the best time growing up doing oh that. yeah we had the rockettes they came right after that yeah some of the rockettes i think were part of the yeah and range they cro they crossed over and they went to i must say sundowners or something mm -hmm. like that you know, when they came 18, they went to the other team. Yes. And they correlated all their stuff together, where one team was, the other team was. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, and they go to the thing where we used to go to Reno, where we went went to some of yeah, Rip Reno. Yeah, we went up to there for a couple of the state finals. Oh, did you? Yeah, and that was a blast. And because right after they did that, the Reno Rodeo mm -hmm. would start, and that was really a blast. And first time I actually seen that rodeo from setting on the bench, mm -hmm. bench line. I, I roped there before quite a few, but we didn't do it in the arena where they were in. Mm -hmm. It was in a different size, indoor arena when we did our roping. This is all outdoor with the bowls and all that mm -hmm. stuff. And that was really cool. One of the bowls got out, jumped the fence, went out there and tore up every truck in the parking lot. Oh, my heavens. Um, I, all you said, look up around here, boom, boom, <laughs> boom. <laughs> You had some unhappy cowboys, didn't oh, you? Oh, yeah, yeah, man. They were running around out there trying to get that bull back in. <laughs> and uh, we were sitting next to two people. And I just, I, they were stars. Mm -hmm. And LSM Elliot? Really? I think that's what his, that guy's name. He played on his bull cowboys, the Sackets. I don't remember that program. Uh, that's been out quite a bit mm -hmm. on TV. The Sackets have they have a series on them. It comes out every once in a while. Mm -hmm. But in, anyway, we're sitting right next to the, these guys. These stars didn't even realize it till it was almost over. And my <laughs> wife kind of noticed, "Hey, ain't that so and so?" I went, you know, I think you're right. <laughs> and He's we asked him, because, "Yeah, he is quite an actor." Yeah, no. yeah. They at the Reno, they make him a grand marshal every year. Oh, do they? Yeah. I have never been to Reno. For a horse event, I've been up there before, so that's something I've missed. Oh, yeah, they, yeah, it's it's a big deal up there. Yes, I mean they have a two-day big parade 
-hmm. when they do it because they got first day of quali okay, qualifying in the second day mm -hmm. they finished all up and in both days they have a big parade going down the down main street mm -hmm. i mean if we had a ball we kind of young at the time too but oh well i think, I think it's getting time for us to give a little break here <laughs> so let's take a commercial and we'll be right back in five Need a dentist? Call Dr. David Wright at 559-222-6213 or visit BiteMeDental.com. Solar power for your home. Email Dan Siemens at LegacyPower.com or call 559-312-5011. Rethink your drink with independent Javita member Christine Levin. Call 559-301-5177 and get healthy and wealthy. Information on author Steve Hammond's Rise of the Penguin Saga, visit www.riseofthepenguins.net. Mike Briggs Properties sells homes in the Tower District and throughout Fresno and the Valley. Did you know we also sell businesses? Why work to build someone else's business when you could build your own? The small businesses we have for sale include restaurants, professional practices, and you can even own your own TV show. This week's featured businesses include an established pizza by the slice business in the heart of the Tower District and also available a laundromat in Van Ness Village. If you are interested in owning a business, call Mike Briggs Properties at 486-6758 and ask for details. Kissed by the Moon, your cloth diaper and natural parenting store. Call 559-231-7101 or visit them online at kissedbythemoon.com. CentralValleyTalk.com Pasture grazed, delicious, nutrient-dense, 100% organic raw milk from Organic Pastures. Visit OrganicPastures.com or call 1-877-RAW-MILK. I was an addict, an opiate addict. The three years clean in October. I was renewed at the Fresno Rescue Mission. My mom, who does a lot of cooking, has been part of the rescue mission, has been willing to help teach people to make jams and jellies and other food. The Fresno Rescue Mission. And I believe that downtown Fresno needs a renewal as well. Tree of Life Cafe represents new, healthy growth in downtown Fresno. I've seen men and women go through rehab programs. They want to start a new life. And yet when they get out on the street, they find it very difficult to get a job. Nobody will give them a chance. That's what this cafe is designed to do. You will be like family to us. We will serve you our home-cooked food made with farm-fresh produce that comes from farmers right here in our valley. We, we love, love downtown Fresno. Fresno. Sunshine Natural Health in Tulare, California is your source for nature's best remedies. Call Sunshine Natural Health at 559-688-2063 and get healthy. If you're considering a reverse mortgage in the Central Valley or just want more information, contact Jerry Carmichael. She's experienced and more important, she's local. Call 559-903-6903. Call Brian Cossack today at 559-977-1976. Protecting you and those you love financially. Make an appointment today. At Miracle Realty, we've been providing premier professional residential sales and property management in residential and commercial property for years. 
We manage single-family homes, condominiums, apartment buildings, commercial buildings, office space, and much more. No matter what experience level you have in property management, Miracle Realty strives to make your experience as stress-free as possible. Serving Madeira and the surrounding areas, we use the latest technology and provide top-notch service. We're a trusted and reliable name in residential sales and property management with the experience to answer any questions or complications that might come up. Give us a call today or visit us online for more information. Central Valley Talk Well, welcome back to Charlie and Friends. Remember like a couple weeks ago I told you Cornbread was going to be back and play? Well, he's back. So I, I got him coming in here in a minute. In fact, he's sitting right to my left here. If you want to, you can go ahead and put him in the picture. There, there see, there he is. He's here. And I'm going to get him to play a tune here pretty soon, but I have a first one to find out what he's been up to because I ain't seen him in about three weeks. So what have you been tearing up? Oh, uh, so I'll just uh, whatever I can, causing mayhem wherever I go, you know, just, uh, I don't know, just, just pretty much uh, working away. Uh, got a motorhome I'm trying to get rid of. And Ooh, what are you going to do that for? Huh? You want to do that, man? Well, you know, I just don't use it. Motor, I ain't going to get rid of mine. I just, I, I just don't use it anymore. Well, I, mine yeah. either. I ain't pulled mine out in two years, but yeah. I, I'm going to, though, <laughs> come July. Well, that's it. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like going to, you know. Yeah. Them things die of old age sitting still, you know. They get funny. Just, how, yeah, they'll break down just sitting there. Yeah, yeah. They, they do that. Yeah, they just, do that. <laughs> boats are like that, too, you know. Yeah. Yeah, just. Big that's old what, money pits. That's why I got rid of my boat. I only used it yeah. once a year. But, yeah. the, but the motorhome, I used it. When I first retired, I used it a lot. Yeah. You yeah. know, I put some miles on that booger. But then I got working back with it, got called to that grand jury, a uh, judge friend of mine, which I could shoot now because all the things he had me do and I've done, it ain't been easy. Mm -hmm. And I ain't had no time to go no place. Yeah. I, in the last two years, I have no time. I haven't took a vacation or a day off. Yeah. I mean, he's been working every day, and I ain't gonna get tired of it after a while. In fact, yeah. today I said, "Man, we're getting caught up. I'm gonna take off three days." Yeah. And, and the secretary looked at me. I don't think so. <laughs> I go, "What?" <laughs> he said, "Well, Monday we got this report going out. This, this, and that with the DA. You know, you're we're arguing with him back and forth on this evidence stuff, and you you, you got to be here to do it. And you, the, the foreman was the only one to do the signing and mm -hmm. and talking to the DA." The other 19 yeah. don't get to for some reason. I don't like that the way they do that, but that's their stupid rules. Yeah, you got plenty of them. Yeah, a I lot of stupid that. ones. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I it's up to me, I throw them out the window. <laughs> <laughs> but I know the last two years I've thrown a lot of them out the window. Well, but, yeah, know, yeah. Got them to change everything. I mean, I mean a lot. I mean, I got where the, the, everybody else in the whole panel now is they're able to put their own piece in their talk. Mm -hmm. Questions they want. Or they, yeah. These big shots we were before, they wouldn't listen to them. But now, they got to listen to them. Yeah, well, I know that it's a long, drawn out process. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's very meticulous. Everything is so meticulous. It just. Oh, yeah. It just. Uh, and you, you drags gotta, things out quite a bit. That's what, one reason courts are kind of backed up, I think. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. I mean, geez, man. Well, even in that grand jury. Sure, we get backed up. I mean, we get complaints in every day. It seems like you think when you're gonna, you're caught up on them. Well, here comes some more. Yeah. And yeah. but it, it's tedious work, and you have to. Every one of those complaints, you got, you got to check them out. Oh yeah. Some are really, some yeah. are real stupid. I mean. Real well, stupid. yeah, but then you, you to, so one thing will be stupid to one person, but it's very important to the next person. Well, you know, that's just, I don't know. Be, I got, <laughs> I got this one in. It. it their complaint was because the sheriff department went on radio and told them about some day that they had coming up, mm -hmm. you know, like trying to let people know what was going on with the sheriff department. Mm -hmm. And this guy thought, oh, he can't do that. You know, he can't go out and talk and give free expression, free speech, or whatever. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was either complaining and wanted us to get on for it. I'm going, what? I say, here, here I am. I'm on regular show. What are they willing to do with me? <laughs> They're gonna hang me. Well, yeah, it was but, that. You know, that, it's one of the when you just throw out the window. Well, you know, it's, but it's you got to call the guy in. It comes down to law enforcement and stuff like that. 
people don't like this when I say this, but your uh, civil rights are only as good as the police officer standing in front of you. Right. You know? We just, in fact, I released today, it went out to the public, so I can talk about it now. We had a, a case with the sheriff department where this guy was in there for murder, but for him a gangbanger. Oh, know, yeah. They shot each other. He lived, and then the other one died. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he, he, he got quite a few years. He's going to be like 60 when he gets out, I think. Oh, yeah. And he's like yeah. only 19 now. Yeah. And this kid, he's a little skinny kid. I mean, he didn't weigh no more than 100 pounds. Right, right. Uh, anyway, I don't know something about the cops didn't like him, I guess. And they just jerked him around, jerked him around, and he sent a complaint in to us, and we get investigating it. And they didn't know they found out, or we found out they had cameras. Oh, there you go. I yeah, took care of that. Yeah, we called the they got all the camera uh, footage in and mm -hmm. went over it. Oh, and me, oh. Yeah. <laughs> the cops are wrong. <laughs> yeah, and so know. the report, report went out today. At, oh, man. The DA's really mad about it. I mean, because he failed to prosecute it. He just wouldn't do it. And there's so much evidence there that it, a blind person could see it. Mm-hmm. But he would not prosecute it. Said the lack of evidence. Now I got 19 people looking at videos mm -hmm. saying, hey, we all see the same thing, 19 of us, and we would convict. Yeah. Then I take it to two judges. Have them look. What's your verdict? Oh, I've seen felons right before my eyes, no, you know. This said, and yeah, that. Yeah, things yeah, don't go all the way, always go the way you think they yeah, should. And the and DA just. would not <laughs> prosecute it at yeah. all. Yeah. And then we run across some more, just as bad as that. Uh -huh. And those he didn't prosecute either. So yeah, oh, that's, our uh, article wasn't too nice about him, but man, he's all mad. And they, yeah. they have a deal they call respond. <laughs> and respond usually takes them about we give them ninety days, and usually it takes ninety days for them. Mm -hmm. With the DA, he had a hand delivered today, and it went out the day he handed his response in the day. <laughs> You know, trying to say, oh, no, 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 we didn't do it that way. We didn't have the evidence like these guys did. This uh -huh. didn't, no, making up all, all, all kinds of excuses. Yeah. And then our uh, jury's asking, what, what do you think we got to do on this? Do what? We put what we seen there and what we thought was the facts. And we got back up on the stuff we got. What's the big deal? Let him do his job. Yeah. Tell a little bit. Well, so yeah. It's going to yeah. be in the paper and everything, so. Hey, people is going to know what this DA is like. You know, he's going to be a, he's one of those, you got to be elected. Well, yeah. So, hey, yeah. You know, but the public the, could bring this up on him later down no, the, 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 the head DA, he just kind of oversees all the deputy DAs, too, though, you know. They're, they're well, in this case here, he was, he got right in on it. He was involved with oh, it from yeah. the beginning. Yeah, yeah. So, so he knew, and last time I see him, it was like, you're not going to change your mind, are you? Nope. I am. Well. Okay, this meeting's over. <laughs> yeah, well, it <laughs> was over. Yeah, and the thing with the little gang bangers like that, you know, it's it's really a problem here in the valley. And yeah, I don't know. It, it, there's, 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 some, there's just doesn't seem to be a solution to it, no. you know. But one thing, it they just, are shooting better. I mean, <laughs> you used to, you know, they always hit the Henderson around them. Well, you don't hear that much of it like we used to. So. Yeah, yeah. It, I figured they're getting better shots, you know. Yeah, well, they're good. <laughs> well, yeah, but look at all look at all the. Uh, the funds and the, the oh, effort that's the money that goes it. to it is unreal. You know, for the to suppress that, you know, that's what keeps the the police department just backed up oh, right yeah. now. It's, it's the gang stuff, you know. It's, it's, oh it's, yeah, uh, and their visitation deals. There's a big deal on visitations right now because I think I guess they smoke with so much drugs in. Yeah, it's unreal. And what our DA, our not DA, but our sheriff, uh, this guy Mike, Mike, he he is great. He's uh, only been there about a year and a half, but the changes this man's done is unreal mm -hmm. even about that case with the da he gave it to the da to prosecute right and the da still turned it down <laughs> well you know he's got to look at his budget he's got to look at what he, what whatever he, he did you know? you know this was an easy one you know that's, that's why he gets them that's what gets them elected and that's why he gets them unelected yeah. too you know is they got to balance it out yeah, and make it one work way or the other yeah. but but he's changed the visitation uh deals to skype now he's going to start skyping uh-huh and he and I said, what are you going to do that for? Because that's where they can't see each other, right there to touch and everything, to pass stuff around, drugs and everything oh, to get yeah, them in. Yeah. He said, that's going to stop. Yeah. He said, then if I find any drugs in there, I know it's from one of my guys. Yeah. 
But yeah. they said that, that drugs get in there like a little piece of crack. Say, it'd be worth ten dollars here on the streets. Inside there, it'd be worth a hundred dollars. Yeah. Well, Where know, these right. guys get the money to yeah. buy it while they're in jail, I don't know. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I know back in Alabama, they're they're doing all of it by video now. There is no really? contact anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I say it's going to start that here pretty soon. Yeah. I mean, uh -huh. we got to come. That's why I, I happen to know about it. We got to complain on it. Uh -huh. uh, mother got mad because she can't see her loved one no more. And, well, most most of Fresno County's been on through glass anyway. It's mostly yeah. prison where they get the contact visits anyway. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah, well, they don't by saying well, they're stopping all contact visits. Yeah. They haven't yeah. done it yet, but it's going to be done by this year. That's one of the new songs yeah. I just added to my repertoire. It's called uh, Conjugal Trailer. Oh, really? <laughs> what you sing that for us? <laughs> well, that's, like I said, I just added it. I didn't think I play it that good yet. <laughs> hey, why don't you play us a song? So I, uh, relax a little bit. Well, I can do that, you know. Just hit we got... We got Four minutes. You got four minutes. Oh okay. yeah. Well, if you want to see a whole bunch of me, you can catch me at 2321 Kern Street tonight. Umi Sushi. I'll be playing outside on the plaza. But since we first come out walking, just trying to find a way back in. From this crazy world where we're blowing like leaves in the wind Just trying to make sense of this life any way that we can And fooling ourselves with the ways of man We can do what we want to we can burn it both ends We can go half crazy Like we got no sense And it's a desperate feeling Just to hold it all in The weight of the world And the weight Well, we thirst and we hunger and we love and we conquer now and then. But we fight over money and power like water and bread. It's so oh, the reason we're turning our backs on our friends. This brotherly love. It's a hard thing to get through our heads We can do what we want to We can burn at both ends We can go half crazy Like we got no sense And it's a desperate feeling Just to hold it all in weight of the world and the waves of pain. We can do what we want to. We can burn it both ends We can go half crazy Like we got no sense And it's a desperate feeling Just to hold it all in The weight of the world I love that. That makes, you know, the songs we got now, like you're singing there, you can relate to them in words. Yeah. What you're saying. 
and these this new stuff they got out. Woo. Oh, the hip hop and that yeah, rap and stuff. You know, and yeah. that rap stuff. Oh, it just. Well, yeah. I wouldn't let that rap in my house. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I I kind of pay attention to a little bit of it because you know it's kind of like the you go back to the Simon Garfunkel that words of the prophets are written on the subway walls and yeah. there's but, mess, there's messages in all music just yeah. because you don't like the way it delivers. Yeah, that's true. You know? I, I, <laughs> I remember him back in the days. Yeah. But he didn't. Say like they say it now, <laughs> you know. Well, yeah, they say it a little different. Yeah, you know? I mean, and them words they use is like, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they are allowing this on TV, every place. Well, I, just, it, I just wasn't brought up that way. Well, you go to Europe, and you'll really see them let it out on TV, oh, you know. No. Oh, yeah. It's, well, yeah. we're going to have to take a little breather here, so we'll catch you guys back in five minutes. Rethink your drink with independent Javita member Christine Levin. Call 559-301-5177 and get healthy and wealthy. Are you a first-time home buyer or investor? Realtor Amy Braun can introduce you to a special program tailored just for you. Call Amy Braun at 960-4155 or visit amyhbraun.com. Need raisins? Call National Raisin Company at 559-834-5981 or online at nationalraisin.com. I think people think of raw food or healthy food as not having much flavor, and this is so flavorful. A very nutrient-dense, and it feeds my body. I love raw Fresno because I learned so much about nutrition. It's organic, and it's it's delicious. It's nutrient dense um, and very tasty. Soak up alive, probiotics, and healthy vegetables to get that protein. Uh, and it's a game changer. It's awesome. Come to Raw Fresno just because I love the food and there's not too many options or any options like this anywhere. I come back because the food is delicious. It's definitely a new experience, you know, the different tastes, the salad, it's absolutely delicious. I love the food because as I found, uh, this food actually has a lot of flavor. It's all so good, it's even, it's hard for me to decide what to eat, so then I'll just take samples of everything. Uh, my husband and I both are addicted to it, and it's like we go through uh, kale withdrawals, because it makes us feel better. It's so healthy, and because it tastes so good. I love the wraps, I love the chocolate cheesecake, and I know everything in it is good for me, and I can eat it and feel good about myself. The food is so healthy and very tasty. I would definitely come back to Raw Fresno. I'm not even the same person. And it's all to this food. It's just amazing. It's transforming. CentralValleyTalk.com Welcome back, Charlie and friends. We had our little break, stretched our legs a little bit, and... I brought cornbread back in, and Susanna. Susanna, I almost forgot. It's okay. If you want I to see senior stuff. moments, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, boom. <laughs> we get those a lot anymore, sir, with our yes. age here. And all three of us here, we're sitting here talking. You know, we're all three retirees, you know, and now we're doing other things with our life. So i like to know, what are you doing now to fill in your life? Because I, I know we don't, none of us, we just too energized to quit. let that yeah. lay down. <laughs> quit. I mean, music is what holds my personality and who I am together. Whether is it, it's up in the mountains or it's listening to cornbread or playing at the Basque restaurant with Kenny's, Kenny Hall's friends, it's just, it's a major part of my life. Without that, you'd be sitting around doing nothing, huh? No. Huh? <laughs> no, you, you, because what? I have to garden. If my fingers aren't dirty, then I'm not happy. Oh. So. Well, I used to say that too. But I got where I, I had my yard so perfect. My veggies so perfect because I had all this time. Uh huh. <laughs> and it's got where people thought I was crazy. Because I was out there tooling all day. <laughs> and this stuff, getting your hands dirty and everything. 
<clears throat> and finally, I, I sat back a little bit and got thinking, you know what, I think they might be right. I'm getting too consumed here. <laughs> so I branched out and started doing other different things to, to keep my mind going, my brains. And which just, we, older we get, sometimes I think we lack in them. I know I, I, know I have. There's a lot of things I, I just flat don't remember. You know, I picked up a book on meditation to try to help me learn how to discipline my mind as far as staying on track with things. And it's a chore. It's hard. Yeah. My mind wants to wander off into watching the butterflies or <laughs> the, the, yeah, <laughs> you know, whatever. <laughs> well, I think that's part of meditation is finding a peaceful place. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. Yeah. Uh, look at Cornbread. You know, he, he's got, well, he's got his music. That oh, yeah. he, he can play with, and let me tell you, playing music ain't easy. It is not easy. Like I said, I tried. I tried and tried on that guitar of mine, and I just can't get it to get it right, too. I, just, I can make up some stuff on it, no problem, <laughs> but I can't play the same thing over twice. <laughs> you just got to play till your fingers bleed, that's it. <laughs> and that's what you keep telling me. Like, Man. I absolutely admire people who can play music. You know, it's a it's a wonderful thing. It it takes you all sorts of places and other cultures and different place in your mind and and it provides a, a pathway to to a great deal of pleasure and peace. It's very therapeutic. Yes. Yeah, I think it's a gift from yeah. God myself. Yes. So, I mean just every anybody just can't do that. No. <laughs> there's some of us, you know, you can't hit a lick. But then there's something else. Like me, I can't play a guitar. I tried, but I can get on that horse and throw a rope and catch a steer 99% of the time. Wow. You, know? you, still, you still do that? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm impressed. Still rope. <laughs> still throw a rope once in a while. I got there you go. Full of them. Yeah. <clears throat> in fact, I just got my truck refixed because uh, I was slacking off there for a while. Mm -hmm. And I'd tell my horses, I go out there and they just got their old heads hung down. And where before, when I'm really doing a lot with them, you walk out there, man, their their head jump up, they're excited, you know, and they'll start running around a little bit, then they'll run up to me and just hit the brakes, you know, like <laughs> we're ready to go, Dad, we're ready to go. <laughs> what kind of treats do you give them? Any? Yeah. What you like what? Oh yeah. I go down and I buy these. They got these bags that's like uh, carrots, uh -huh. dried Ooh. carrots, and uh, green apples. Uh -huh. And let me tell you, them two horses I got, they'll go any place for that. I don't care if they, you. They can make them climb straight up, they'll do it. I mean, they go crazy for them. For oh, some yeah, they reason. stand on their head for carrots. And oh, yeah. About that. And they're yeah. all fake stuff, but, but they love them. You know, so they, they see me out there walking in the pasture. I always got to carry something in the pocket because they're going to come up to me, and I know they are. And they're going to bug me till I give them some. And then they'll take them, and they'll kind of wander off a little bit, and I can do my work or whatever. Do they come around and kind of smell around your pockets oh, and stuff? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, nudge yeah. you, push you, you know, try to yeah. get you down, you get your hands in your pocket, pull it out for them, or they'll try to take it out for you. They might have slapped their jaws <laughs> on the back pocket, trying to open my pocket. <laughs> and then I got my dog, every animal I got, they're spoiled, they're rotten. I got, started off with two dogs, got five now. Only two is still mine, but I got them all, they're all spoiled, every one of them. Do they go with you when you go riding? Yeah, yeah, that'll, uh, well, one of them will ride right in my lap as I go. A little one? Yeah, a little one. And I got this one big one. He ain't quite learned the right way yet. He, <laughs> he's one of those uh, square head dogs. Pits? Pit bull, yeah. Uh -huh. My grandson dropped him off, more or less. Came over there, you know, I mean, this dog, he just up, friendly as can be, knock you down. I mean, he's solid. And so we took him down, and he was breaking out. He tore my fence up. Oh, dear. <laughs> I had this plastic white fence, mm -hmm. and that dog would just go right through that fence and chase other dogs. <laughs> so I fixed that problem last week. You know, he's talking a little bit higher now when he barks. <laughs> but he, he'll go out to those horses, <clears throat> go ride them, and he, he, he's out there wanting to play. Yeah. And them old horses think, hey, I don't like the way he plays. Uh, <laughs> and he's been kicked, whoa, several times. Teach him some manners. Yeah, and I think each time 
he's going to learn. <laughs> but that stupid dog keeps coming back for more kicks. <laughs> and I mean, I see him kick him six feet. Just, <laughs> wow. And that dog just kept just, wow, that was fun. <laughs> Let's do it again. Yeah. You know, and, and he go over there by the horses and just, he'll prance. He won't bite him or nothing. No, he's just playing. Yeah, he's just playing around. I mean, he's just jumping, you know, and it ticks him off. <laughs> you know, they, they don't like it. And he, they're not he, sure whether he's serious or not. Right. And I told him, don't calm down, dog, calm down. <laughs> but he gets all excited. And I'm, I mean, I don't know how they know like pulling the driveway. Mm -hmm. And then dogs will go crazy inside that house. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how they know I'm out there because I'm awful quiet. My car's quiet. I'm quiet. <laughs> I'm inside the car, but I can hear them ah, as soon as I pull in that driveway. My wife will tell me, they go nuts, you can't calm them down. She goes, I used to pull in, walk over and feed the horses and come back. Then go in the house. I can't do that no more. My wife made me stop doing that. I got to get out of the car, straighten the house first, let's see the dogs, hey, 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 good dogs. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm out calm down, and I go out feed yeah. the horses and come back, you know. Do they follow you out there and go snuffling now, around? No, nah, I make them stay inside. There are too many of them to watch. <laughs> time, five little troopers, man, they, they get in everything. You know, they're like kids. Yeah. I mean, you name it, they're into it. And But they're, they're nice dogs, too. You know, they don't really care too much. Just that pit bull is everything up right mm -hmm. now. How old is he? I want to say he might be close to a year. Oh, he's oh. just a baby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he's, he hasn't learned yet. No, he's, no, no, no. He hasn't. Like, but he's learning quick. I mean, I got that dog <laughs> shaking your hands, sitting uh -huh. for you, laying for you. And uh, I got him where he'll walk <laughs> up to get his treat. <laughs> My little granddaughter, she's there. How do you do that? How do you do that with that dog? <laughs> I just keep telling her it's magic, man. It's magic. <laughs> Watch this. Yeah, she don't know I got that treat in my hand. That dog's <laughs> after that treat, you know, nothing, nothing else. <laughs> How old is your granddaughter? Oh, I got one. She's three. I got a three, a seven. That's the youngest right now. The rest of them, I got ten grandkids, and most of them are nineteen and over now. Uh -huh. well, except those two, two babies. Hmm. That's a pretty fun age. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. My wife loves that age. Yeah. She hates their teenage years. I don't blame her. <laughs> Teen, teenagers are confusing. I think, uh, yeah, you're they right there, stuff. Cornbread. They are. They're real confusing. <laughs> I, I mean, I got two girls and one, well, two, one nephew and what the girls are. Uh, Niece? Nieces. Nieces. Uh -huh. And they don't know what direction to go. And they're all graduating here about the same time out of high school. Now the guy, he's boy, he's got, he's been living with me though for about seven eight years. Mm -hmm. He's got his head on pretty good. I mean, he's wanting to be a lawyer, and he knows it, and he's going after it. Good for him. Yeah, but now the two girls, airheads, they do do not. Well, one of them does in a way because she got she's real good at baseball, mm -hmm. and she got uh, picked up by uh, uh, Minnesota. Wow. Some college there, uh -huh. play baseball. I mean, she's a pitcher, and boy, she can burn them out. I mean, all the teams she's played on ever since fifth grade mm -hmm. has taken first. No matter wherever she went, they took first place. Wow. And, and then there's one, I remember there's two teachers of a husband and wife. Mm -hmm. They coached at this one little school that she, when she came in, at, and they was getting ready to quit and retire. You know, give up being the coaches and mm -hmm. everything. And somebody told him, say, hey, you got this girl coming up, Savannah White. He goes, hang in there. So you'll get a championship. And I go, well, okay, we'll hang it out another year. She got him a championship two years straight. How exciting. Were you able to go to the games? Oh, the yeah, yeah, right. oh, yeah, yeah. We went to all the games. And <laughs> even when they went to the series and everything, mm -hmm. we went. Provide kids with a, something they find of interest and they can focus on yeah. and, and that kind of really helps you know lead in out of the teenage years which are oh, it does like they're good girls just the one she goes to college and then she's going to be a vet that mm -hmm. uh, and I'm the cause of that I know 
because we're way back. I, I saw all these animals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Going to the vet, I said, you know, it should be nice if we had a veterinarian in this household. <laughs> so that's why she went back to the school. It, it has really good veterinarian mm -hmm. classes, I guess. But, and she lucked out by getting a free scholarship. I mean, everything's free. Okay. Yeah, my niece, my niece just uh, a couple of years ago just uh, came from uh, the University of Tennessee, mm -hmm. the veterinarian. Boy, you got to jump through some real hoops. To oh, get yeah. They, they tell me it's worth the doctors. Oh, yeah. Well, that's more than doctors. Yeah. yeah. They, they oh, go to yeah. school two more yeah. years and a regular doctor. And getting yeah. accepted by a school is just mm -hmm. like lightning being struck. Yeah. It's it's hard. It's mm -hmm. hard. Yeah. She's graduated now? And yeah, yeah. She's uh, practicing veterinary up in uh, Long Vancouver, Washington now. Yeah. Oh, there's big but, job, paying jobs out there for the old vets. Sure. They're just not that. Really, I don't think there's that many out there. I know in our town there's not. Not, yeah. not for big animals. There are a lot of dog vets mm -hmm. for the like, puppy dogs. But for, and cows. We've got vets for cows because of the yeah. dairies. Yeah. Right. But you come right down to uh, the horses and stuff, sheep, some of the animals like that, they're not out there. Because, you know, I tried with my horse, different vets, and they just didn't know how to treat a horse. In fact, two of them lost two of my horses, Ooh. and by rights, I don't think it should have happened. You know, they they guaranteed me when the surgery they had was going to fix this problem, and they killed them. Hmm. And two both good roping horses too, and I mean, oh. both of them I killed them both. Hmm. And I just quit taking them to the vets, and I said, "Well, I can kill them just as easy by trying to nurse <laughs> them." And it seemed like since I've been doing it myself, they're doing better. They're doing better. Hmm. Yeah, hmm. I had a. a, a Coach tell me one time, from uh, he's an ag teacher. He said, God put them on this earth, and if they're going to be strong, he'll have them survive. If not, they will go on. So, you know, there's nothing you're going to do to stop it. So I kind of listened to that advice there, and, mm -hmm. and he's right. It, if they're born real weak sometimes, you know, they're not going to make it. It wasn't meant to be. Uh, just whatever is meant to be is meant to be. Right. That's what it is. Yeah. Just, yeah. No, no they could be a that. weak, weak horse, as little, but they can man, just get mm -hmm. out of it. You know, it's whatever, what it's yeah. meant to be yeah. on, on that. And it's, it, if you sit back and watch and take the big picture of it mm -hmm. and look at it, and, and you, you you see how it does work. Some of these things, you know, these professors and teachers tell you. No, well, the term "survival of the fittest" came from somewhere. And that, right, right. That's probably part of where it came from. Yeah, and but the new generation—I don't think they're thinking that way. They're thinking, you know, they don't want to do nothing or anything. I know they're driving me nuts. I, I go places and I, I watch all the time, <laughs> and I, I'll just crack up the way some of these kids are. You mentioned work, work. Ooh, <laughs> a bad word. Oh, man, uh, the difference between a job and a and work. I used to always hire the people that were looking for work. I didn't want anybody to want a job. That's too yeah. easy. <laughs> <laughs> I love watching my grandkids. They've they've had to work their way through college, oh. and um, you know there there's not a free ride in this family. Nobody can, mm -hmm. unfortunately, send the kids off. Yeah. Uh, well, Corvette, do you think you can play us a song when we go out? My good. Our time's going to be about up here pretty soon and just get another song as we go. Okay. Good. And just leave it on cornbread as we go out. Then come back at the end we'll just say bye. So I'll just sit here when you don't tell us when we're saying.
Texas from the Cumberland Gap, Johnson City, Tennessee, and I've got to get a move on me for the sun. I hear my baby calling my name, and I know that she's the only one. And if I die in Raleigh, at least I will die free. So rock me on like a wagon wheel, rock me on a handy way up hill. Out in the yard with the dog out there. <laughs> yeah, you better run. No, the other dog stay with me right now. I speak for five dogs. Yeah. Uh, I mean, my, my wife got so mad about it because all the <laughs> our bedroom door. Oh, five of them dogs would run in there and jump on the bed. <laughs> and you ever try to sleep in bed with five dogs? No. It, it don't <laughs> work. <laughs> so I was nice enough. I was I'm a nice guy. I said, well, I'll hit the little couch for a while until we get rid of some of these dogs. <laughs> the two, two little dogs out there, which is our dogs. Yeah. They've always slept with us, and they know to sleep at the end of the bed and everything. And but now we've got these other three that's not ours, and, and I'm hoping they will go away one of these days. But <laughs> yeah. if not, I don't know what I'm going to do because I can't live on that couch forever. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll be sad when they go. Uh, well, sort of. Yeah, huh? yeah sort of. <laughs> you know, you, you you'll miss them, but. Sure. Yeah, I'm thinking about the dog I got in my backyard and came to stay for a few days 15 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but we got here about a minute, huh? Yeah. Our countdown here. Oh, I just, I think about that, you know, then that drive back home right now and walking it out of the boat. <laughs> but this weekend, I am going to kick back, and you know what? I won't think I'm going to do nothing. Did it go for a ride? Yeah, but you know what? I'm yeah. gonna take it right on my motorcycle. Oh, you oh, can tell us you about that. Yeah, I got two motorcycles. <laughs> I mean, oh, there you go. I'm in hot with my wife all the time. I mean, I bring this stuff home. I forget to tell her about it. <laughs> toys. <laughs> yeah, my toys. Yeah, toys. Oops. Yeah, yeah, big oops. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <coughs> well, I guess we'll have to let go and see y'all next weekend. And it's been a, a lovely, a nice day here talking to our guest and love every bit of it. They come back again and play some old cornmeal over here, play some more tunes later on maybe in a week or so, and we'll just take it from there and have a good time. So everybody say bye. Thank you. See you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>